Hi everyone, it's Lauren and this is the first half of my June reading wrap up. So these are the books that I've read in the first couple of weeks in June. So I've read three books so far this month and let's get straight stuck into them. After finishing all of the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist um, in May, I really wanted to go with something a little bit easygoing and fun and just, just very, very different. And so I picked up The Crane's Dance by Meg Howry. I say easygoing and fun, it's a little bit of a psychological, I don't know, thriller? I mean, <laughs> This is about two sisters, Kate and Gwen, who are both dancers in a famous New York ballet company. Um, and this is written from Kate's perspective in the aftermath of Gwen's nervous breakdown, essentially, that she's had. No one really knows what's wrong with her. And Kate is unpicking their past, looking at what could have led up to this moment, and also realizing her own anxieties, obsessions, and neuroses that she's dealing with in herself. And it's kind of a mix between what is maybe naturally in their characters and also the very oppressive nature of being a professional ballet dancer and the sacrifices and pressure that they're under to get to that point. I really, really enjoyed this book, but I do say that as someone who loves ballet, who still dances ballet now. Like I loved her descriptions of what it takes to be a professional ballet dancer. Um, when she's talking about Swan Lake and kind of having little jokes about certain ballets, her descriptions of being in an open class. I really, really liked that. It's really hard for me to step back from my previous knowledge and know what it would be like to read this book if you didn't have um, that prior experience. I feel like if you are interested in performers, interested in ballet, interested in what it might be like to be a professional athlete even, because that is what they are, then you will still find this book really interesting. If you're not interested in ballet at all, I'm not sure that the writing and the, the story stand up enough um, on their own. But as I say, I did really enjoy reading this and I think you'll especially like this if you are interested in ballet or ever danced ballet at all as, when you were a child. The next book that I picked up was a continuation for me of J.D. Salinger's Glass Family series and that was Raise High the Roof Being Carpenters and Seymour an Introduction. Now my history with Salinger is a little bit checkered. I read The Catcher in the Rye quite a long time ago and I really didn't like it at all. I don't know if I read it now, if I would maybe see something different in it, but at the time, absolutely hated it. And then I read Franny and Zoe, I think about a year and a half ago now, and I really, really enjoyed it. And it made me want to read much more of Salinger's work. So this is another book in that series that follows the Glass family. Franny and Zoe are the youngest two of um, seven children. And these two short stories, focus on the eldest two children, Seymour, and his uh, second brother, Buddy. Race Are the Roof Beam is very much what I, in my limited knowledge, would maybe term a, a classic Salinger sort of writing. It's very much um, dry and, and witty and a snapshot of a certain class of people. It's quite self-deprecating. Um, and I found that quite interesting. This is very similar to Franny and Zoe. And then Seymour and Introduction is a stream of consciousness where Buddy is trying to um, come to, to terms with the grief of his brother after he has committed suicide. That's not a spoiler. All of these short stories are written in this very odd um, point, so somewhere between the present day of the where the short story has taken place. And with the voice of, of hindsight as well, almost as if the narrators, whoever they may be, are foreshadowing what's going to come next so that that doesn't come as a surprise you, you sort of know that that's where Seymour is ending up in his life. I had heard that Seymour was quite difficult from some people and it is not necessarily in terms of the writing itself but just in because it is stream of consciousness and I guess if you've not read very much like that before this could come as quite a shock. I think in this bind up it actually works really well because you have a very traditional short story which introduces the characters to you um, in Ray Tyler Roofing Carpenters and then Seymour an introduction kind of follows on from that and I think that really works to, to get you comfortable with who these people are and who their voices are that you're hearing from. It does feel quite long, it does feel um, a little bit self-indulgent but I think that is the point of it because Buddy is trying to get his grief on a page and trying to create a representation of who his brother was and then despairing at the inadequacy of his writing and how he cannot create this person again. Um, so it, it does go on a little bit but that is that's what's happening here, that's the point of it. Um, so overall I just really enjoyed reading some more of this. The last one I've got to read is for Esme with Love and Squalor and then I'll have the full set and then maybe I'll try The Catcher in the Rye again <laughs> and see if I like it more now that I'm a little bit older or now that I've read a little bit more. And the last book that I've read so far in June is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. This is my second Anne Bronte. I read Agnes Grey a while ago and really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoy Anne 
Bronte's writing style. I think she's much easier to get on with um, in terms of her tone than her sister's work or any other writing of that time really. If you're not someone who reads a lot of classics, I would definitely say that Anne Bronte's a really good place to start. I would probably suggest starting with Agnes Grey um, because she just has a very matter of fact, very modern approach to the way that she writes and it just it makes it very easy to understand and very readable. This book is about Wildfell Hall which has stood empty for a number of years and then is suddenly a couple of rooms are let out to a woman Helen Graham and her son and within the town where Wildfell Hall is there's a lot of speculation and rumours about where she's come from and what her past history might have been and it is up to our narrator Gilbert Markham to discover this and work out what her history is. A couple of things to watch out for in this novel are a couple of things that I did struggle with a little bit was one the overall format um, which is I find quite a contrived um, method that authors of this time use. It's very similar to Wuthering Heights in that the fact that it's a novel um, has to be part of the story so somebody is physically writing it down and that's a trend which you know happens in that era. That's not something that I can be upset about with this novel but I still find it a little bit as I said contrived. I also found it quite long I think it was maybe 350 pages my edition um, but it just felt a little bit laboured and it, it just went on a little bit but having said that I really enjoyed the writing, I enjoyed the characters, I really enjoyed the plot, found it very interesting. Um, perhaps just for me I wasn't in the mood for it because I think the things that I'm picking up on are things like the structure and how long it was, which, you know, uh, maybe I just wasn't in the right place of mind to read it because every I can't fault it in any other points. So that's it for me. I've not read that much so far in June, but that's really because I have just left my job. Um, I had the last two weeks, the first two weeks of June were the last two weeks of me working at my previous job. And so my evenings and mornings and everything have been rather busy, rather full up, hadn't had that much time to read. But I do have some time off now before I start my new job um, in July. So I'm sure my second half of my June wrap up in a couple of weeks is going to be like a massive pile of books probably. Um, so I would love to hear from you. Sorry, I'm so hot. It's really, really hot. Oh, my neck is really sweaty. I would love to hear from you if you've read any of these books, if you've read any other Brontes, um, any recommendations that you have for me. We'd love to have a little discussion in the comments below and I will see you in my next video. Bye!